So in the last lecture, we started this regression topic and we discussed a bit about ridge regression. I will again give you the introduction of this topic. Regression is required to remove the overfitting from our model, right? Overfitting was one of the problem in regression. So there are two types of regression, L1 and L2. L1 is lasso, L2 is ridge. And we started with the ridge uh, regression and we saw that ridge regression has this formula. Uh, Ridge regression performs L2 regression. So you have to remember these uh, keywords that L2 is corresponding to ridge and L1 is corresponding to lasso. Lasso's full form is least absolute shrinkage and selection operator. Okay, so these are the few things that you need to remember. These are the basic things. Then what does this ridge do? Ridge helps us to add a factor of sum of squares of coefficients in the optimization objective. So the initial objective function was till this point uh, till this point this was our objective function of mean square error right and then in this uh, l2 regulation we are just adding this thing lambda into sum of squares of coefficients it means that we know that the coefficients are beta naught beta one up to beta i whatever the number is so we have generalized this thing let's say it is till k so it has been generalized like we have to do the square of coefficients till k from 0 to k and we are multiplying the lambda factor lambda is my regulation parameter so this we discussed we ended the lecture at this point in the previous class so now what's next so this lambda can have multiple values right it can be infinity it can be between 0 and infinity and it can be 0 so what does this mean for our model so remembering this thing that you have to add this factor to reduce the uh, overfitting so we have to deal with this lambda and lambda having these kind of numbers will affect our model in a way when lambda is equal to zero the objective will become same as the simple linear regression so just imagine that this lambda factor is zero then whole of this second term is zero then it is uh, there is there is no change right so that's what is written that there is no change and it is uh, exactly same as simple linear regression the way it was at the beginning and then we will also uh, get the same coefficients as simple linear regression when lambda regression factor is zero it does not affect uh, i mean it we cannot say that we are doing any kind of regression if it is infinite right so when you have to keep your lambda as infinite in a way you have to make this thing zero because we are trying to reduce right we are trying to reduce this error so whole of this thing is error this is my cost we have to minimize the cost so the objective is to minimize so if lambda is infinite then the whole of the responsibility is of the second factor summation of uh, sum of square of coefficients now it has to be nearly zero then only things will be good for us because we want to minimize so that's what is written here that the coefficients will be zero all of it has to be zero because of infinite weightage of the square of coefficients anything less than uh, zero will make the objective infinite so anything except zero at this point if this lambda is infinite then my cost is infinite there is no profit right for us so if lambda is infinite we have to make sure that my beta square summation this factor has to be zero then only this infinite will be uh, minimized to zero otherwise even if you take 10 to the power minus 100 even this will become infinite if you multiply this with infinite right so it has to be proper zero so that's what is written and then if it is between these two then what does this mean the magnitude of alpha will decide the weightage given to different parts of objective now where is alpha alpha was my uh, alpha was my learning rate but this equation does not have alpha i think it is it has to be lambda here so the magnitude will decide the weightage given to different parts of the objective and the coefficients will be somewhere between 0 and 1 for simple linear regression right so obviously uh, my beta it has to be between 0 and 1 and uh, if the number whatever the number is let's say my lambda is 10 to the power 20 it is very big then still my beta has to be somewhere like 
10 to the bar minus 20 if it has to become 1 right so my beta has to be somewhere between 0 and 1 it can be 0 to 1 and if it is more than 1 then obviously this will become more huge right so whatever the lambda is it has to be less than 1 then only it will be overall uh, very less so ridge regression using gradient descent now we are discussing gradient descent so till now we have seen linear uh, this least square error method right least square error method means this mean square error method and uh, this was the objective in that case but for gradient descent we saw that my function is this right so we were updating our beta value by subtracting alpha that was the learning rate multiply by change of this beta uh, change of this function based on this beta value and uh, this was my objective so with this we have to add this thing this part is common uh, the similar this is exactly same that was in the earlier case so you are adding this thing so when you solve it when you try to first calculate the gradient of the cost function you are trying to do the differentiation here so partial differentiation gets you this thing where you are uh, getting this thing right i mean whatever let's say uh, you are doing it for beta naught at this time then beta naught will be out and all the other values will be zero let's say that it was beta naught square plus beta one square plus beta two square and uh, i mean till k but if you are doing this thing for beta naught what you are trying to do here you are trying to get this value it will become two beta naught right and all of the other values will become zero so that's what uh, what is written here so it was initially 2n in the denominator so this 2 will be cancelled with this 2 and uh, single n is here and uh, 2 is gone from this side otherwise all the other steps are easy to understand so this is how we get this beta naught uh, differentiation with respect to beta naught similarly if you do it for beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 general method will be this so general formula will be 1 by n into summation of this minus y i in the end into x i j plus lambda b j so whatever the number was beta naught beta one so it will be like this so this is the general function which you get after solving for uh, this zero one two three you will get this general formula you have to remember this then therefore the regression coefficients are updated as this so overall your update function becomes this one earlier it was different but now uh, the updated version is this so there are some changes on the right hand side and then uh, or maybe you can write it in this form that uh, beta j is common because the, here is beta j here is also beta j so you are getting the beta j as a common factor outside and then you are writing whole equation right so there are multiple ways you, you can do it mathematically and get the value and then uh, in least square error fit method we will now we are talking about using the least square error method earlier it was mean square error right uh, this one was mean square error then then there was gradient descent and now least square error so there are three different things that we have discussed till now i mean this is the third one so in the least square error fit we represent the error in a matrix form and we have solved this kind of a thing earlier we get all the values in the matrix we get this constant value one we discussed in the lab also when we were doing the practical of gradient descent optimization uh, i think it was least square error fit optimization only so in that case we solved this thing that uh, I mean, we had some 13 variables in the data set, but, but we were getting 14 after doing some normalization and because we were adding this one as the extra column. So same thing is being done here. Uh, this is my uh, epsilon values and then the Y values, then the beta. So these are the error Y and beta values. There are the three matrix. And uh, fourth one is the X. This is the data set, whatever we are trying to work on my overall cost function will be mean square error plus this lambda sum of square so this mean square error function or the square error function it is similar but now we are trying to do it for the matrix uh, i mean for the matrices and then the cost function will be updated now we are talking about matrix uh, part so everything is in matrices form we are just trying to solve it using this transpose and everything uh, i mean if you see this equation carefully mean square error equation is this part 1 by 2n uh, 
and till this part only only this part but then because we are also adding this lambda into sum so this is the second part so these are the two factors uh this is the first one error square plus this lambda into sum of square of coefficients when you solve and i mean when you substitute all the values in the matrix form and you are trying to solve it you get the mathematical equation as this last equation so you have to directly use this equation in your programming if you are told to implement ridge regression using this method you have to directly solve for this equation you will be given uh, x you will be given y and you will be given the initial values of beta and then you have to solve for this thing that using the matrix form on the data set what are the different uh, i mean what is the objective function that we are getting what is the minimum objective function we get by using ridge regression and you can solve it for uh, i mean uh, this can be done uh, the square function is minimized using the second derivative test now this is the first derivative right and if you i mean we have discussed first derivative how to do it uh, for beta not beta 1 beta 2 you have to do it twice to get the second derivative and that will be the minimum right and for doing that first getting the first derivative for the first derivative we are just trying to do it uh, with respect to beta and solving that matrix we get this one in the end so this one is my uh, so this one is my first one we actually did this thing only in our lab when we implemented gradient gradient descent function we were actually doing this thing x transpose x uh into i mean this was inverse then x transpose y so this was my original function this is the original gradient descent equation but using regularization method we are getting this plus lambda i factor as a extra so you have to do this lambda i i is the identity matrix so you have to do this and after you get this first derivative you have to do the second derivative and solving the solving this equation you get 2x x transpose so this is a positive value and it is written here that beta is updated as uh, this equation but it will solve the problem of overfitting and multicollinearity uh, this equation will not be zero for the correlated features so this is a extra thing that we we are learning here that uh, beta is updated according to this equation that we know but now it will also solve the problem of overfitting as this internal part this part will not be zero for the correlated features now tell me one thing if you have a data set and you have some correlated features that say there were multiple correlated features so x transpose x will get maybe you, you you will get this value as zero when you solve it for the correlated matrix if all the features are correlated with each other this might become zero in some case and overall my beta will vanish uh, over time if we are trying to do for this uh, correlated features and that was the multicollinearity problem multicollinearity was one of the problem for linear regression uh, in that we would we discussed that uh, we know that multiple features will help us in getting the prediction of y so x and y were there x x was the multiple independent variables and using using this function of x you could get the value of y so we know that y is dependent on these x values but there might be a case that within these x values multiple features let's say x1 and x2 are highly correlated it might be a case that these two are highly correlated maybe 0.9 similarity is there so these two are independent uh, i mean they are ideally independent of each other they are theoretically independent of each other but in real world there might be a case that these two features are dependent on each other and that will become a problem for us when we try to implement this thing we are trying to uh, implement the uh, implement this equation so for that we are just adding this regulation parameter that overall it does not become zero even if that happens so that was the third step and we got the positive value so this will help and then lesso ridge is over so now lesso is l1 and in this nothing changes only instead of power square you are having power as 1 that too with a uh, i mean as a absolute value so earlier we were doing the square right and 
instead of power two, now we have power one. So that's the only difference. Whole of the other equation is exactly same. Power is one in the end instead of power two. So this is the basic equation of Lasso and uh, Lasso's full form is least absolute, least absolute uh, shrinkage and selection operator. So you have to remember this. Sometimes people get confused between this these two words. Uh, if you write least absolute selection and shrinkage operator, it will be wrong. So you, I will help you to disc. I mean, remember this thing that shrinkage will come first. Uh, I mean, when we are trying to reduce the overfitting by this regulation parameter, right? We are talking about the coefficient, and coefficients are being shrinked because of my lambda. Right. I mean, in the end, we are trying to minimize this cost objective function and to reduce that, that cost of object, objective function. We are trying to reduce this thing and uh, reducing this thing means simply that we, we are trying to reduce the value of this beta. Right. So shrinkage is being done. Shrinkage of beta is being done least absolute shrinkage and then selection operator means that let's say that you have beta not to beta 10 there are 11 parameters in ridge regression what was happening was because you were trying to reduce this by using this lambda into summation beta square you were actually focusing on reducing the value of beta and it might have been the case that beta not up to beta 10 were let's say uh, 10 20 30 40 up to 100 right and you're trying to shrink it and everything, let's say it is divided by 10. So it will be one, two, three, four, up to 10. But in Ridge, in Ridge this was the case, but in less so the case is that out of these beta not to beta 10, out of these 11, randomly when there is high correlation between uh, two or three features, randomly one of them is selected and let's say beta not beta one and beta two were having very high correlation. So randomly one of them will be selected. Let's say beta one is being selected, but other two beta naught and beta two will be equated to zero. So we are selecting one feature out of those three highly correlated features. That's why this word selection comes here. So these are the two things that are being done in Lasso. You are trying to shrink the factor, but you are also selecting, you're selecting one out of all of the correlated features. So this is the equation and uh, you can see that N is the total number of training examples. K is the total number of features, right? So the case is that let's say this is my Excel sheet and in this Excel sheet, this N is my number of features. K is my number of features. So number of columns is K. So N into K rows are N columns is K. So N into K is there. Beta J represents the regression coefficients of gth input variable and lambda is the regulation parameter so i mean i hope it is easy to understand the equation now now if you solve this equation you will have three cases you will get beta equal to these three values when your cij has these kind of values so let's see what is this so cij is written here but let's see so since x is not differentiable at x equal to zero, right? So we all know that if you differentiate a static variable, uh, it will be equated to zero, right? So uh, yeah, this x modulus is not differentiable at x equal to zero. Therefore, the regression coefficients are updated as follows. So you have to keep your lambda according to this uh, so cij upon dij so these are the cij and dij let's see what is it so cij is equal to xij into yi minus this equation and this dij is the second part so what's happening is you are dividing you are you are saying that this first part is my cij this second part is my dij if you see the equation carefully you can also understand this so this is my cij summation of xij into yi minus this 
and then dij is this so the, it it has been divided into two parts so this beta j will have the value of cij upon dij plus lambda by 2 when cij is less than minus lambda by 2 so based on these equations you can easily predict the values that yes uh, if my cij value so the first part is having my value less than minus lambda by 2 then i have to give this as the output if it is between these two then uh, it will be zero and if it is greater than lambda by 2 my equation will be my beta will be this cij upon dij minus lambda by 2 so the key difference between <coughs> less so and ridge are i mean i have already told you this key difference in ridge we include all of them okay but we are doing the shrinkage so we are doing the shrinkage of uh, beta values let's say they were beta not to beta 10 initially they were 10 to 100 but you have shrinked them into 1 to 10 so you have reduced the factors by 10 times so this is my ridge but in lasso what we are doing is along with the shrinkage shrinkage is being done but then you are also co i mean uh, you are also making some coefficients exactly zero so these beta values that were shrinked earlier now out of those beta 1 to beta 10 maybe uh, four of them are zero so maybe earlier it was 1 to 10 but now 1 2 0 uh, 0 5 6 0 0 uh, 9 10 so now four of them have been equated to zero okay so obviously now there are some applications related to these things you can reduce the features by less so you can also do the overfitting uh, you can also handle the overfitting uh, using the less so but then uh, if you want that you do you do not want to lose any parameter you want to keep all of them but you want to reduce the overfitting so in that case you can use ridge because ridge will not delete any feature uh, in this case it is equivalent to deleting because when you are multiplying any x value any uh, column of the matrix with this beta value of zero whole of that column is gone so you are kind of removing a column out of the data set right i mean shrinkage is being done but then removing the column is being done so there are multiple applications based on this thing so use cases are this in rich we are used to, i mean it is used to prevent overfitting majorly obviously because we are reducing the beta value and then since it includes all the features it is not very useful in case of exorbitantly high features so let's say there are uh, millions of features right if there are millions of features obviously you want to reduce the number of features you don't want to keep all of them so when you are trying to reduce the features along with the handling of overfitting go for less so right otherwise it is fine to reduce uh, the overfitting using ridge now what where does this lasso comes it provides a sparse solution sparse why because initially there were 10 features but then uh, only few were left let's say third and fourth were gone then five came six came seven and eight were gone nine ten so initially there were 10 but now there are uh, only six out of them one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so so just imagine that there is an excel sheet initially there were 10 values in single row in the second row it is only six values right so there is a sparse matrix because the left uh, other part is zero now all the, all other features are gone so it gives a sparse solution it generally uh, it is used when we are trying to handle millions of features right maybe tens of thousands of features and you have very less uh, comparatively less power of computing you will go for less so because it will help us to handle the overfitting also we will reduce the we will do the shrinkage of the beta values as well as we will make some of the features gone and then uh, when there is highly correlated feature it generally works well ridge ridge works well when there are highly correlated features uh, as it will include all of them uh, but the coefficients will be distributed among the depending on the correlation so for example let's uh, let's say that we are trying to do the house price prediction number of rooms are there number of uh, floors are there area is there right maybe number of uh, markets near that house are there so in a way uh, okay so there are number of fans also available per room on an average so fan and room 
are kind of interrelated somewhat right because fans are inside a room only so there there is some kind of a correlation between them so using ridge there might be a case that we give weightage of maybe 0.1 to fan and 0.9 to room right so this kind of weightage is being talked about here that uh, the coefficients will be distributed among them dependent on the correlation so whatever the correlation is it will take care of the weightage that is being given so now less so it will arbitrarily select one feature let's say that there are two features fan and room so it will select one of them it, it might select room and it will make this fan as zero so it will be gone in in lasso only one will be kept out of it randomly so that's one that, that's what is being talked about it is it arbitrarily it arbitrarily selects any one feature among the highly correlated ones and reduce the coefficients of the rest to zero and also the chosen variable randomly uh, it randomly changes in the model parameters obviously now if number of features are being uh, reduced and i mean you're trying to do the work so there might be uh, changes that will not be helpful for your model so in that case regression is better i think this is over yeah so if you have any doubt in this lecture you can ask otherwise i will start the next topic i have to discuss today itself uh, the different kinds of evaluation metrics for regression problem so if you have any doubt you can ask any doubt to anyone Okay, so I will switch my screen to the other topic. So this is a new topic, evaluation metrics for regression. So we have covered a bit of these in the lab itself when we were applying the logistic, not the logistic, but the gradient descent and the least square error method. So when we did that kind of regression, we checked in the end that what was the quality of the answers that we were getting. We implemented few of the evaluation metrics that day on the last lab, in the last lab. So evaluation metrics, let's begin with this topic. It is a very small one. So there are five main evaluation metrics that are used in a regression when we are trying to solve a regression problem there are these five evaluation evaluation metrics that will help you to uh, to find that if your model is being trained in a good way and your errors are, errors are coming to be less comparatively we have reduced those errors so those these five are mean absolute error mean square error root mean square error, error and r square r square uh, error which is also called as coefficient of determination and adjusted r square so these are the five things that we'll, we will be discussing and the performance of the regression model is generally measured in terms of errors in prediction so when we are trying to judge that the model is good or bad we are looking only on the errors and if the error is minimum then it is the best one right so that kind of a model is the best one and till now we have discussed gradient descent optimization we have discussed least square error method we are always trying to minimize the cost so that is what is being talked about in this that when you are applying those things you are trying to minimize and then you are also doing the regression you are trying to solve the problems by reducing the overfitting using l1 and l2 regression methods but in the end these things matter these five things matter if these things are of a good scale uh, if you are getting very less amount of error then that is the best one so now let's look into the formula of mean absolute error as the uh, name says that mean absolute error so we are taking a mean so 1 by n error is actual value minus predicted value so y i here is my actual value right and this y i hat is my predicted value so actual minus predicted giving uh, gives us the error right and this error has to be absolute. So we are using this absolute function here, right? We are absoluting the value, whatever the error is, let's say minus two plus two, whatever it is, it, it will be two after doing the absolute of it. Mean means we are trying to get the average value. So one by N, right? So one by N into summation, Y minus Y hat, uh, whole of it, 
absolute value right so this is a very simple one mean absolute error second one is mean square error same thing instead of uh, your absolute value you are trying to do the square everything is same you are getting the mean you are getting the uh, error by subtracting the predicted value from the actual value then you are also squaring it so this is the basic formula i hope everyone understands this now so root mean square error means that whatever we did in the mean square error we are just applying square root on it so square root of msc is rmsc right so you are doing the square root of msc very simple to understand now these last two are the ones that you need to uh, put more concentration now r square or the coefficient of determination means that it measures the proportion of the variation uh, independent variable explained by all the independent variables in the model so uh, so we are trying to focus on the proportion of the variation right so we are getting the variance right so we are trying to get the variance of all the features and then we are trying to solve the i mean solve whatever we are trying to do so it assumes that every independent variable in the model helps to explain the variation so there is a assumption that every independent variable now there are multiple variables all of them are independent of each other this is the ideal condition and then then the y variable is there uh, the target value but these are the these ones are the independent variable and y is my dependent variable technically so the formula is r square equal to explained variance of the model divided by total variance explained variance means that you have to subtract the mean value mean value from the predicted value right every time and then do the square divide by mean value has to be subtracted from the actual value so this has to be remember in the numerator predicted value is being written in the denominator actual value is being written we are subtracting the mean value every time so where y i is the actual value y hat is my predicted value uh, i th input of the test set so we are talking about the test set here y hat uh, this y bar is my mean of those actual values right so you have to remember that this is my actual value this is my predicted value right so you have to do the mean of this part you have to do the mean of actual values to get my y bar so this is simple and another total number of test samples and alternatively this is also one of the formula one minus unexplained variance divided by total variance so you can also write it as this thing uh, y i which is actual value minus prediction value uh, whole square summation divided by y i minus mean value of the actual values so this is also one of the formula you have to subtract this out of one so this is also r square this one as well as this one these are the two formulas of the same thing right explained or un, un, uh, unexplained variance now this has to be remembered that this r square value uh, has to be between uh, minus 1 and 1 and uh, this r square is negative only when the chosen model does not follow the trend of the data so fits worse than the regression line i think uh, so this should not be the case so because we are trying to uh, do this thing we are trying to get the r square value so when we are squaring the value uh, the range has to be between 0 and 1 i will confirm it and tell you by the next lecture i think there is a error in this slide so r square value has to be between 0 and 1 technically when we are squaring anything it should not be a negative number no mathematically it is possible when error sum of squares from the model is larger so yeah i mean uh, mathematically it might be the case that you are uh, this this error is greater than uh, i mean this one now if sse is greater than sst then obviously sse upon sst will be greater than 1 and in that case when you are subtracting this number let's say it was 1.5 something like that then it will be a negative number so in that case it might be true but we have to check it still i will have to check it uh, for now we will assume uh, i mean i have to check it uh, that if it can be greater than 
I mean, uh, it, it can be negative or not. If 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 that if is uh, if that is the case, if S S E is greater than S S T, I will have to check and I will let you know and by the next lecture. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the range has to be discussed again. I will discuss it. Okay. Now, next thing: significance of R square uh, score. R square is a statistical measure of how close the data uh, is to the fitted regression line. 0% indicates that the model explains none of the variability of the response data around its mean and 100% indicates that the model explains all the variability uh, around its mean. So this has to be remembered that significance of R square when 0% is there, it means that none of the variability uh, is around the mean and it in the second case, all of the variability is around that and higher the R square value, better the model. So we, uh, this R square value should tend towards one it should be on the higher number it should not be very small so obviously one is the maximum number that we expect so that way the model is better if r square value is high now let's say that these are the, this is the numerical and you have to solve this so let's consider that there are n number of lectures x x number of lectures and uh, it affects the number of hours uh, spent at university per day right so if this is the equation this is the prediction equation then find all these values right now consider that the number of lectures per day x affects the number of hours spent at the university obviously uh, if number of lectures are less you have to spend less number of hours that's very normal thing so you have to find all these uh, four values using this prediction equation if you solve it I mean, obviously, you will have to get all the all the things. You will have to get the error. You will have to get the absolute error, square error, y minus uh, y bar. That's um, and y minus uh, mean of y. Then SST sum of square uh, values. So you have to solve all of them, and you will get the value of MAES 0.57. Uh, this one as 0.38. R square value as 0.89. So this is the last one. The numerical was easy and you have to just fill the values from the table. But now we have to discuss this last thing. It will take only two minutes. Adjusted R square score is required. Uh, th there is a saying that R square value may always increase when we are including more features in the data set. But adjusted R square takes care of the quality of the model because uh, even if the number of features are being Im improved in the model, let's say you are trying to add more features in the data and uh, then you are trying to train your model and get the answer adjusted r square will not will try to regulate the r square value it will not uh, say that okay more features are there so let's improve the number let's get the higher number so let's see how it works it measures the proportion of variation explained by only those independent variables that really affect the dependent variable so it only improves when uh, in reality this independent variable is actually good for the model right and it will penalize you for adding the more number of variables more independent variables that does not affect the affect the dependent variable let's say that there are five uh, features that affect the sixth one right but then if you try to add the let's say a a number of feature this a column in the original five columns of data set so five plus a this will be penalized this column will be uh, i mean whole of my model will be penalized if it is not affecting the sixth uh, this actual uh, y the target value if it is affecting it then only some changes will be done the positive changes so every time you add an independent variable the r square will be increasing um, even if the independent variable is insignificant it never declines so r square will always go up 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 when we try to add more number of features but adjusted r square will increase only when the independent variable is significant and it is actually contributing in the prediction of the dependent variable and this is the final slide of today uh, r adjusted r square has this formula one minus uh, one minus r square into n minus one upon n minus k minus one where r square is my uh, r square value k is the number of predictors that is my independent variables n is the total number of uh, sample size so n is my total number of rows let's say thousand k is my number of features let's say i had only five features so k is five n is thousand 
and r square value will come from uh, previous formula and those three values will be used to get the adjusted r square value and adjusted r square value must be used to compare the different regression models with different number of predictors and in case we want to decide uh, i mean it will affect only I mean, again, I will say that it will affect only those uh, things when it is significant. If the feature is significant, then only my model will be affected uh, in a positive way. Otherwise, it will be penalized. So that's all uh, for today. If you have any doubt in today's lecture, you can ask. Otherwise, we will end the class. Excuse me, sir. Yes. सर जैसे कि ग्रुप पे मैसेज करे थे सर कि वो कोरपस और वो वो वेक्टर में मतलब डाउट है सर मतलब सबको हां तो वो लैब में करेंगे ना हम दैट्स पार्ट ऑफ लैब मतलब जितना पार्ट हो रखे हैं मतलब जो हो सकते हैं वो करके और सबमिट कर दें असाइनमेंट हां 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 ऐसे करेंगे जितना आपको मतलब वो क्वेश्चन नंबर 2 था जिसमें कोरपस था राइट सो क्वेश्चन नंबर 2 वाला अभी कोरपस वाला पार्ट छोड़ दो बाकी कर लो Uh, that's the only thing that can be done right now or maybe i can extend the deadline i will increase the deadline by maybe 6 days okay so that will be better sir yes yes i will do that thank you sir okay okay then thank you i am ending the session